taken down and put in a warehouse. Back to the people in the airport. It can only be found in a warehouse. So I hope that it will be found, found in, and put in a new setting. Also at the end of the 1950s, uh, and roughly maybe about the same time, 1957, Louise Erickson commissioned a friend, Diana, that's who was Louise Erickson, the mother of all the commissioned a friend, Diana, to paint the 14 stations of the cross at St. Philip's Anglican Church <coughs> in Inagua. And um, I've got to thank Dennis Rhodes, uh, everybody knows Dennis, but he uh, goes down to Inagua regularly um, to look at these rare butterflies that he found out there and he took these pictures for me. In these paintings, Diana beautifully captured the tradition instigated by St. Francis of Assisi of the journey of prayer and devotion, commemorating the passion of Jesus in his final hours, a simulation in each local church of a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Unfortunately, a hurricane damaged the church and the paintings are now housed in the community center, the Anglican community center in Matthew Temple. But I thought I would just show you the pictures. Uh, Jesus condemned by Pontius Pilate. Given the cross. Falling for the first time. Meeting his mother. Simon the Cyrene carrying the cross. Veronica wiping the face of Jesus. Jesus falling a second time. Jesus meeting the daughters of Jerusalem. Jesus falling the third time. Jesus stripped of his garments. Crucifixion nailed to the cross. Dying on the cross. And his body removed from the cross. And laid in the tomb with the word in incense. Later in life, Diana told Lee Ingram that during the era of her sketchbooks, 1933 to 1957, that she had to put pencil to paper every day, that it was as necessary as eating or sleeping to her existence. She was very particular about the lead sketchbooks and the paper she used, slightly heavier than an onion skin paper, and all sketchbooks until the last were the same time. Lee believes that the illustrated screens were done at a good point, enthusiastic point in Diane's artistic career. I think she continued to earn a living from her art, but increasingly this meant mass repetitive production of scenes to sell to tourists, which was burdensome for her. And from my recollection of over her adult conversation, her life was further complicated by Clive's outspoken support for some fringe political party endorsing independence, which may have instigated threats to their lives. I think they left in 1950, so I think they left Nassau in the mid-1960s, driving across the USA and then ending in Victoria, BC. Later, my mother, Lee's mother, and other family members were purchases of a prolific gouache I think that's what I'm doing, watercolors. It's a method of painting in which you take watercolors and mix with gum. And you, you can't really see this in justice if you see it on the laptop. It's very beautiful. Three that I have, that's Lee Erickson, uh, are two Inagua scenes dated 51 and 52, and one of the Nassau waterfront dated 1955. So that's a 1955. The earlier paintings are signed D.B.L. Pullinger, and that's how I knew uh, I had the right Pullinger when Vicky sent me the uh, census. And the 1955 simply D. Pullinger. Other family have more of these paintings from those early years. Lee Erickson and her husband, Walt Ingram, moved to the Washington State in 1970 and visited Diana and Clive there very regularly. 
At that time, she produced a pretty extensive set of scratchboard technique drawings of Haida Indians, canoes, totem boats, etc. But I understand from a local authority, they lack true anthropological accuracy and form a limited reception as tourist mementos, probably limited by lack of distribution. Diana then put her artwork to rest and worked in an old person's home until her retirement. The adult and friendship between the Ingrams and Diana started with that visit in 1970 and continued until Diana's death in either 1985 or 1986. I had a half a dozen or so of good two or three day visits with her, first at the Victoria suburbs and later after Clive's death in her mobile, mobile home in the coastal town of Ladysmith. Uh, Ladysmith's known as the Banana Belt of Vancouver Island. Uh, and I at least have visited there in the summer, which was a very beautiful place. Uh, when she moved to Ladysmith, she pursued her second passion, swimming in the cold strait of Georgia and enjoying some good, close neighbor friends. But during the cold Canadian winter, Diana looked forward to an Australian winter for a change and also felt some obligation to visit her Australian in-laws while her health still permitted her. She visited Clive's family in Australia and stayed with his sister Thea, close to the sea, and swam there daily too. A letter to Lee in November 1982 says, And enjoy being part of a family I was so long alone, and realized I was being like a hermit, which is not good for anyone. So Diana was not keen on living alone, especially in the fairly big house that she rented. Uh, she rented out as a spare bedroom to a young man as she played chess with him in the evenings. Other pastimes she enjoyed were listening to opera and she took up reading French classics in French just to exercise her mind. She continued to do it on two little dogs that she and Clive had shared affection for to the point of spoiling them. The dogs moved with her when she happily sold the suburban home with a back food, backyard full of fruit trees to move to Lady Smith. This move allowed her to return to swimming in the summer months, comfortable exercise for her arthritic knees. She also bought a small electric organ, which she taught herself to play. In 2004, several of Diana's paintings were auctioned by Lunds, that's an auction house in Vancouver, Vancouver, Victoria, um, including lot 147, which were the six medals from the Royal Academy of Arts. Um, I, I only see four, I don't know if the others are here or those are the top. This is a picture I took from the site. Um, they were estimated at between $100 and $150, and they sold for um, the other lots, 148 to 167, demonstrate the breadth of the work. You can see these on, on the site. I haven't taken them off. It was very difficult to dip even that one. I tried to um, take it off and then print it and then scan it and then put it in. Um, so these uh, lots that were auctioned demonstrate the breadth of the work as they contain oil paintings, watercolors of exotic schemes, sketch on the many travels around the globe. Of particular interest were two additional sketchbooks, Lot 161, uh, sketchbook with artwork by Diana Pulitzer Cavill, uh, auction estimate 50 to 100, and only sold for 25. Lot 162, a sketchbook with artwork, Diana Pulitzer Cavill, uh, estimate 50 to 100, sold for 35. So it didn't sell for very much. But I managed to get an email from Lund's spokesman, Arthur Underhill, he says, I do remember this consignment. It came from a group of cabins at Salte, which is on the water between Sheminus and Ladysmith on Vancouver Island, Northern Victoria. The cabins were being taken down for condominiums. The pictures themselves had been left behind when the occupants moved. Apparently the artist had lived there for a time. Diana Pullinger Cavill is known as an illustrator in this year, in this area. Her artwork does not come on the market very often. Some of the pictures we sold at that time were quite good. And 